friends, this video on life processes part 17 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Agenda now, we are going to talk about respiration in human beings. How do we respire? So the respiratory system consists of so many things. It starts with our nostrils. We all know what is nostrils. So it starts with the nostrils, the nasal cavity, pharynx, trachea, lungs, bronchi, bronchioles and alveoli. So, so many things together constitute the respiratory system in human beings. So, we will talk about each of these parts in detail one by one. Before that, let me just introduce you with each of them. Nostrils. Nostrils is nothing but the nose. So, in nose we have two nostrils, right? Nasal cavity, the nostrils will then extend into the nasal cavity. So, this cavity is nothing but the nasal cavity. Then we have, so you would, you would have felt that, right? When you breathe in, you feel that there is some empty space inside your nose. Like fr from your nostrils, the air moves inside and you can feel that there is some empty space. You can actually feel it with your hands that there is some empty space inside your nose. So that is nothing but the nasal cavity. After the nasal cavity comes the pharynx. I have already introduced you with pharynx. What is pharynx? It is a common point for both or common entry for both food and wind. So food comes through the mouth and wind comes through the nose. So both of them reach pharynx. But pharynx is the place where it differentiates the food and it sends the food into the food pipe that is esophagus and it sends the air into the air pipe. So next is trachea. Trachea is nothing but the wind pipe. So here you can see this is the trachea, a pipe like structure. So this trachea is nothing but the wind pipe. Now this trachea will go and it will reach the lungs. So lungs, there are two lungs, a pair of lungs present and this trachea will go and connect to both the lungs. Bronchi, what are bronchi? This trachea will divide like this in both the lungs. So this branches, the branches of trachea are known as bronchi. The bronchi will further divide into smaller branches that is known as bronchioles and bronchioles will again divide into further smaller branches that is alveoli. Right? So now you are aware of what are the different parts of the respiratory system. Now we will discuss about each one of them in detail. So let us start with the nostrils and the nasal cavity. Nostrils, openings through which air is taken in. So in our nose, we have two openings through which the air is taken inside. Fine hairs present which filters the air taken in. So you can also see that inside our nostrils, we have very small hairs. So those hairs actually when the air is taken in, if there are any dust particles in that air, so those hair will prevent the dust particles from getting inside and it will block them in themselves. So that is how, that is the function of the hairs which are present inside the nostrils. Nasal cavity, cavity where the air reaches through the nostrils. The way we spoke about the buccal cavity or the oral cavity, we saw that the food is taken in through the mouth and the mouth leads to the oral cavity. Similarly here, the air is taken in through the nostrils and the nostrils lead to the nasal cavity. A central septum separates the left and the right air passages dividing the two nostrils. So here we have a central septum. It is sometimes also known as the nasal septum. Now if you look at the nose like this from the front view, this is the front view of a nose. What do you see? These are the two nostrils. Right? So if you see, see your own nose at the center of the what divides the two holes? The two parts are divided by a wall-like structure. So this wall is known as the central septum or sometimes it is also known as the nasal septum. So this septum actually separates the left and the right air passages dividing the two nostrils. If, if this wall is not there then there will be just one big hole. right? So this nasal septum separates the left and right air passages. Nasal passages are lined with ciliated epithelium and mucus. So now once the air enters into the nose and passes through the nasal cavity, so everywhere in this passage it is seen that it is lined with ciliated epithelium. What is ciliated epithelium? The epithelial tissue which is lined with cilia. Cilia are the fine hair like structures, right? 
and it is also lined with mucus. What is mucus? The slimy, slippery substance. So what does they do? Mucus being a, a slippery, watery substance, it tries to moisten the air. It tries to make the air little moist. And what does cilia do? Cilia tries to block the dust particles or microorganisms or any kind of germs present in the air. So this cilia, mucus as well as the fine hairs which are present in our nostrils, they all actually help to prevent the dust particles entering inside our body with the air. Right? So now you must be wondering that now from mouth we have an oral cavity. Again through the nostrils we have a nasal cavity. Now how is the nasal cavity and the oral cavity separated? So oral cavity is somewhere here. Right? Now this nasal cavity and oral cavity is separated by a bony plate. So this is the bony plate. So you can see because the nasal cavity and the oral cavity needs to be separated. Otherwise there will be no segregation between the food which we eat and the air which we take in. So the air and the food pathways should be kept separate from each other. Right? So we are clear with nostrils and nasal cavity. What is their function? Okay. Now air enters through nostrils, get warmed and moistened at nasal cavity. So nostrils are used only for entry of air and nasal cavity warms the air, moistens the air with the help of mucus. Then the next part is pharynx. I've, I have talked about pharynx before also. It is a common passage for food and air. So what happens, both food and air reaches the pharynx. From here, it gets divided into the two different tubes. So food reach goes to the um, food pipe that is esophagus and air goes to the wind pipe that is trachea. Now trachea, now you, you must be confused then, then how trachea and esophagus are situated. The trachea lies in front of the esophagus. Now if you look at this diagram, this is the trachea. This is trachea and this red colored pipe is the esophagus. So you can see here that esophagus lies in front of trachea. And where do we have the pharynx? This is the pharynx. So this point is the pharynx. So this is the point where it segregates into the food and the um, air segregates into two different pipes. Now, how is it that food does not enter into the trachea? I mean, how is it controlled actually? So, how the pharynx controls that food does not enter into trachea? So, for that, there is a small structure called epiglottis. What is epiglottis? Epiglottis, here you can see a small structure here in red. So, this is epiglottis, which is a small flap of skin and it prevents the food from entering the respiratory tract. So, this is the epiglottis so what does it do it is kind of a door so if the door opens the food can enter if the door closes, the food can't enter now this epiglottis is always closed it is an always locked door so because of the presence of this small flap of skin food can never enter inside the trachea so epiglottis is the one which prevents the entry of food into the respiratory tract well now just imagine what would happen if the food enters into the respiratory tract because this pipe is made in such a way that it can carry air. Now when food particles, that to come in complex food particles will enter inside it, the tube will get choked and the person will not able to breathe in and breathe out because the, the passage will get blocked. So as a result, the person might die. Right? So this segregation is very, very important. So here from this diagram, you can clearly see how the digestive system and the respiratory system, their location. So this esophagus is going to the stomach and the stomach will then go to the intestine. And here this trachea is going and connecting to the lungs. Clear? Okay. So now let us talk about trachea. That is the wind pipe. So this is the pipe which is actually going to carry the air from the nasal, from the pharynx. Air passes from pharynx to this pipe. So the air entered, the, entered our body through the nostrils, then it went to the nasal cavity, from there it went to the pharynx and from pharynx it came to the windpipe or trachea. 
C-shaped rings of cartilage are present on trachea. So if you look at this tube, you can see that there are some ring-like structure on this tube. So what are they? They are cartilage rings. We, we already know, right, what is cartilage, what is bone. This is a kind of connective tissue. So this cartilage are present on the trachea and they are C-shaped. So if you look at it, it is not completely circular, but rather it is in the same in the shape of C. So these kind of cartilages are present on the trachea. So what is the pur purpose of this cartilage? It prevents collapsing of the trachea even if there is no air. Now suppose if inside there is no air, so the trachea is quite flexible. So if inside there is no air, there are chances that it can collapse down. It can shrink up. So in order to prevent that collapsing, these cartilages are present to give it some structural support. So what does these cartilage do? Prevents trachea to collapse when there is no air. It is internally lined by cilia and mucus. So you see most of the organs of the respiratory system, they are lined with cilia and mucus. And needless to say, what is the purpose of cilia and mucus? As I mentioned before also, they try to block the dust particles, microorganisms, germs or any other undesired particle. So see everywhere they are present so that the air which is coming inside our body can be filtered as much as possible. So even inside the nasal cavity we had them. So in the nostrils also we had fine hairs. So some filtration is happening at all places. Runs from throat till the thoracic cavity. So the trachea starts from throat. So you can see it's, it is starting from somewhere here from the throat and it runs to the thoracic cavity. Now the question is what is thoracic cavity? The word thoracic has come from the word thorax. So let us see what is thorax. Now let us suppose if this is a human being, we divide the body into different parts. The upper part is called as head. The next part is known as thorax and the third part is known as abdomen. So broadly the body of a human being is divided into these three divisions head, thorax and abdomen. So in the abdomen comes the uh, structures like small intestine, large intestine, stomach all those things comes inside the abdomen level. What is thorax? What all things lie in the thoracic? So this cavity or this empty space or this space of the abdomen is known as the abdominal cavity. This space of the thorax is known as the thoracic cavity. So the lungs are present in the thoracic cavity. The end of the thoracic cavity or what determines the border of the thoracic cavity? Diaphragm. Diaphragm is a muscular structure which denotes the end of the thoracic cavity. So the lungs are situated within the thoracic cavity and this trachea it starts from the throat and it ends in this thoracic cavity. So what are the organs which are situated in thoracic cavity? The lungs, the heart, they are situated in thoracic cavity, right? So this trachea runs from throat till the thoracic cavity. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.